Hello, in this video, we will learn how to answer any MCQ questions on switch case in Java. A switch case is a multiple branching statement in Java and it allows a variable to be tested for equality against a list of values listed as case statements. I am going to assume you know the basics of switch case already. If not, you can watch my videos to get your basics right. Now to solve MCQs, if there is a compilation error as one of the options, the first thing you need to do is check for the syntax. Like in these statements, which of them have correct syntax of the switch statement? And the first thing to check is if all the keywords such as switch, case are present and all are in small letters. Also check variables are named as per variable naming convention and there is no missing punctuation. Like here switch has capital S which is an error. There is no colon also here after the case statement. Will it give an error due to curly bracket inside the case? No, this is not an error. You can put a nested block inside the case. However, do not think that now you do not need to write a break. There is no break here which is fine as break is optional and its absence will not cause any compilation errors. Also note it is perfectly legal to put an arithmetic expression in switch. In the next switch block, there are two case statements in a row, which is again perfectly legal in Java as long as each of them has a colon in the end. If you think these extra semicolons after the statement or switch block will cause compilation error, you are wrong. You can put as many semicolon as you want at the end of the switch block and it will not cause any error. However, try putting a semicolon after the break and it will certainly give compilation error. So this switch block has no errors. Now in the next block, we are using char value which is integer value 65 typecasted to char and it is totally fine to use it in switch. So it has no errors. Answer is no as A is not put in single quotes. All char literals have to be enclosed in single quotes. And what about the int value as case? This is also perfectly legal and you can use ASCII codes for char values in a switch statement. Let's see the next switch block. It's using string. Is it allowed? Yes. Starting from Java 7, string is allowed and it does a case sensitive comparison. So no errors here. Can we declare variables inside the code block? Yes, that is also perfectly legal and you can declare variables inside a case statement. But will it cause an error because I am not entering simply. I will be entering case coding and I have not declared in this case before using it. Answer is no. There will be no error. The whole switch is one block and once variable is declared, it can be used by any case statement following it. So this is a perfectly legal statement. Now let's look at next switch block. This one uses byte. Is it okay? Let's make a list of what data type is okay and what is not okay. Okay data type includes byte, short, int, char or string, but it cannot be long, float, double or boolean. So coming back, is everything okay with this switch block? No, because byte can have value only till 127. Since one of the case statements has value beyond it, it will give a compilation error. Similarly, it will also give error for short and int also if you give values larger than its size limit. Let's look at the next one. So can we change the n value once we are inside the case statement? Yes, we can very well do that. But does it mean now it will enter the case 20 statement? Answer is no. It cannot enter another case as break takes it out of the switch block. So can we use continue to allow it to check and enter again? Answer is no. Continue is used along with loops and it cannot be used with conditional statements. Next, can we use the same constant for 2k statement? Again the answer is no. 
and can we use variable names as values in case statement? Answer is both yes and no. They can be used only if the variables are declared as final, which comes back to the point that it has to be a constant. Now in this next switch block, default is used before case. Will it give error or go directly in default and then exit the block? Both are incorrect. Default can be written anywhere in the switch statement before the other case statement as well. It then however needs to have a break to avoid fall through in the next case. It will be executed only if a matching case is not found. So this is perfectly legal and correct code. After syntax, let's see how to solve output kind of programs which will check if you understand how the switch statement works mostly with fall through concept or convert kind of questions, convert if to switch or switch to if. Let's start with output questions. What is the output of this switch block? Here if you look carefully, there is a compilation error as one of the options. So the first thing you do is check for different syntax errors as we just discussed. There is no syntax error here, so we start executing it in sequence. Here default is before the case2 statement. So will it enter default? The answer is no. It will find the matching case statement and enter case2 and print2. Now there is no break statement in this case, so it will enter case3 as well. Here the statement is to print 3. So how will it print? 2 and then 3 in next line or 2 and 3 in the same line? Here since the first statement in case 2 is print, it will stay in the same line and then the next println statement will print in the same line. So the answer here is 23 will get printed. So be prepared to check carefully whether it is a print or println in the statement. In the same code, what would get printed if n was 4? Here since there is no case, it will enter the default block and print default and then go to the next line as it is a println statement. Next it will enter case 2 as well as there is no break after default. This print 2 will get printed in the next line and since this is print, the cursor will remain at the same line. Next it will enter case 3 and print it in the same line as the cursor is here. So this is the output and correct answer for this. Let's see another question. Now here there is no compilation error in the option. So do not bother to check for any syntax errors and assume that the program is correct. Here what is printed if c is equal to small letter a? Here which case will it go to? Since switch does a case sensitive comparison, it will not enter capital A. If you know ASCII code, you know it will enter 97 as 97 is the ASCII code for lowercase a. Here x will become 4 plus 4 equal to 8. Next it will enter default as well as there is no break and add 5 to 8 giving answer of 13. This will get printed as the answer. Let's take a look at another program. Here what is the output of this switch block? Here since n is 10, it will enter case 10 where n is set to 15 and there is a break to at the end. Now since the value of n is changed, will it enter case 15? Answer is no. It will come out and the value of n will remain 15 only. So that is the correct option. Now we will see some conversion questions where you are asked to convert if else to switch. To solve such questions, first whatever is given before if or after if, any declaration or initialization of variables, print statement will be copied as is in the answer. Now we will pick up the if statement. You will focus on all equality statements which are there in the if block. There are 4 over here and you see there is a common variable t which is compared with 4 different values. So you will first write the switch statement with this common variable and put it in the curly bracket. 
Now the four values with which it was compared with will form the four case statements. So write four case statements and do not forget the colon. Now we will look at what happens inside the if block. In the first if for both A and B where is set to 1. Here we will leverage the fall through concept and copy it only one time rather than duplicating it. We will remember to end each case with a break statement. Next we will go to the else if block. Here again for case X and Z we will copy var is equal to 3 only once and put a break at the end of it. This gives us the answer. Let's look at another question to convert if else to switch. We will follow the same steps and first just move the statements before and after if as is. Next we will see all the equality statements in the if block. Here the common variable i is getting compared with multiple values. So we will create a switch on common variable i and put in the curly brackets. Now can we directly create case statement with j and k? No we cannot as they are not declared final. So here since you have been given the values of j and k, substitute that value in the case statement. Next you copy the statements inside each block to the right case statement and don't forget to end each case with a break. This also has a else block so we will add a default statement and copy the statements inside it as is. This gives us the answer. Let's see some reverse questions where you have to convert switch to if else. Let's take this first question. Here before writing if, first what we will do is directly take any statements before and after switch as is in your answer. Next if there are any variables declared inside switch which are used in more than one case statement, they need to be moved out of switch. So you will add int l2 before you start writing the if block. Now you will write the if statement for each case. Where there are multiple case executing the same statements like case a and e, you can just use or in your if. So the first statement will be if x equal to equal to a or x equal to equal to e. Inside this if statement, you will just set L to 20. Next you will write if x is equal to 66 and in that case set L to 30. This is your answer for first question. Let's take another example which has fall through. Here too to get the answer, first we will copy all the statements before the switch as is. Then if you see the switch, it does not have any break in case 1. So you will write your if statement if n is equal to 1 and inside it you will write the statements of both case 1 and case 2. So it will execute both y plus is equal to 1 and y plus is equal to 2. Then you will write else if n equal to 2 and in it write only y plus is equal to 2. This is your answer for this question. Let's take one more example. Here again we will first copy the statements before switch as is. Then we study the switch block and we see variable g is declared inside the switch and it is used in multiple case statements. So we will need to pull it outside of the if block. Now we will start writing if for each case statement. Here s is a string. For string we will not use equal to equal to but we will use equals function. So we will write s equals first and in that set g equal to 1. Now next is default and after that there is another case. So in if can we write else and then add another else if? No, we cannot because else always has to be the last statement in an if block. So what we do is we first process all the case statements and then at last we handle the default statement. So we will go to the second case for which we will add a is equal to second 
where we will set g equal to 2. Now we come back to default, so we will just add an else where we will set g to minus 1. This is the answer for this question. Hope this explains how to solve MCQ questions on switch. If you have any doubts, you can always practice using our sample questions or you can learn from us at simplycoding.in. Thank you and all the best. Thank you.